We're live. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Calling this meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods, the California Nonprofit Mutual Benefit Corporation. This is Tuesday, July 3rd, 2018, here in the boardroom. I'd first like to begin this morning with asking Director Matson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I see uh, the media is here. That's good. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Going to get a second. All in favor? That's good. How about uh, approving the minutes of the meeting? Uh, second. Discussion? All in favor? There we go. Okay. I'm going to start out my uh, comments this morning. I'd like to ask the board members, staff, and community members that are here to please stand again for a moment of silence for <clears throat> fire, Long Beach Fire Captain David Rosa. Thank you. I spoke to four of the battalion, battalion chiefs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Secondly, during my comments, I'm going to ask uh, the president of the 18th Hole Golf Club, Mr. John Soule, his board member, David Schmedley, um, who's going to present a check from the, the uh, club to the foundation as a result of the Memorial Golf Tournament. Beth Perrick is going to be standing in. She is a board member of the foundation and she will be receiving it. So I'm going to ask them and Brian Gruner, the Director of Recreation, to come before the board uh, to make that presentation, please. Come on, Beth. Thank you, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the men's club, uh, we had our 10th annual Memorial Golf Tournament in May. And uh, the foundation is the only charity that the men's golf club supports. So uh, without further ado, we'd like to present this check. $31,250. To the foundation. On behalf of the foundation, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'd just like to say a couple words that the men's golf club is the club that just always remembers us and gives us a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gift. And there are so many of our clubs in this village that remember the foundation, that keep it going, and so many individual donors that do the same thing. So what is the foundation? It is our charity for our village, our community, only for our people. And we meet the needs only through the work of our social service department, and they recommend these people for an emergency need, and the foundation funds, whatever the emergency need is. They'll write a 
check to the electric company if they can't pay that bill, et cetera. So to the men's golf club, you are always there. You are our heroes. Thank you so much. Thank you, and I'd like to have David Schmidley say a few words, please. Yes, uh, this is, we're very proud to present this check to the uh, foundation. And this year and last year, I also want to thank VMS because they were good, real good partners with us in uh, making this happen. And over five years now, uh, we have donated over $120,000 to the foundation. And we plan to continue to do that. So thank you very much, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to Tom and the GRF board for their support. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the board, it's just great to be here. Great to do the things that we do for each other. Thank you. To finish my comments, I'd just like to say, cover your coffee, please, and silence your cell phone. And away we go. Item seven, VMS, Lisa Bender, please. Okay, um, I'm going to do something, uh, two, uh, two other things today. I'm going to use the slide presentation where I'm going to provide you all with some examples from the VMS strategic plan. This is the second year in a row that we have uh, completed a strategic plan. We do that by working with the directors in a, in a planning meeting and putting down in words, not pictures, what the goals are for the year. We actually have five goals, enduring goals, that are aspirational for the VMS group. And um, they are the same as they were for last year. So there we go. Next slide. These are the five goals. They are to... Uh, Provide exemplary customer service. As you all know, Brad puts customer service as one of the top uh, goals for VMS. To, but to also do that with uh, efficient operations, to provide us a safe community, and also to do transparent communication. And also to become an employer of choice. Some examples of our strategic plan this year, and I could read them all to you. There are over 80 items, but I won't. Okay, so next, please. Um, as part of the providing exemplary customer service, we have several objectives, examples of objectives that I want to show you. There are actually 18 for this goal. Uh, update the new resident uh, welcome that goes on um, to uh, make sure there's more um, input from the residents before there are major uh, initiatives. We want to convene VMS staff and resident focus groups so that we get some input beforehand. We always seem to sort of do that but get accused by residents of not asking for their input. So we want to formalize that process. There's going to be, uh, that has started, an analysis of resident calls for landscaping needs. We know that landscaping has not been of the quality always that is desired. And so we're going to start doing some data analysis about what types of calls come in, where are the locations, and how 
is the responsiveness and timeliness of responding to resident calls around that. We're also going to do this year, VMS is going to do a Saddleback College survey of residents for new courses. What ideas and what things would residents like to see coming from the Emeritus program? And then there will be more communication or more continual communication to residents on how to handle emergencies on weekends and off hours. So when something happens uh, on the weekend and resident services may not be staffed, that's when people have a lot of questions and what they should do. So we're going to reinforce what should happen here. To facilitate uh, efficient operations, next please. Okay, we're going to review the strategic plan. We do that at least quarterly at the VMS board, and then at semi-annually we meet with all the directors again at once to take the pulse of how we're doing on where the strategic plans go. You may remember that last year there was a caregiver um, process, application, um, provided a policy so people could adhere to the caretaker policies because we know that that's one of the, the folks who come through the gates without maybe the right kind of clearances. So we're going to work on compliance for caregivers, okay? A little tricky because sometimes a resident is in the hospital and has to come home with a caretaker and may not have the means or the, the, the needs the means or the ease at that point to get the caregiver application going. So that group has a challenge on their hands on how to make sure we have compliance. Um, going to work toward integrating the electric vehicles that we have into the fleet and work toward eliminating diesel uh, vehicles. Convert to LED lighting wherever possible and uh, just because you might really be interested in this, we're going to automate the golf operations inventory. Okay. Providing, next, providing a safe community, we're going to have postings from Chief Moy on the resident portal site. Um, he's going to continue building the building and block captain neighborhood watch program. He's continued to implement the disaster preparation training annually that goes on, and construct gate arm access, working with their redoing some of the gatehouses at this point. Next, please. We're going to continue to have to see Brad and some of the directors on Village Television. I think Brad goes every other week. Is that right, Siobhan? Yeah, OK. Um, provide schedule of regular maintenance that are coming through some of the breeze articles at this point. Um, we're going to post service statistics from resident services on the website. So that's more transparent and ongoing so people can see what's happening. And some staff are going to improve reach of their communications for those who do not use electronic communications. And this is a very recent one, produce and place factual transportation newsletters and buses. Um, so there could be reliable information for those who use the buses hoping to stop some of the rumor mills that go on. Okay, last, become, last aspirational goal is to become an employer of choice. Thank you. Um, it is tough out there for hiring and retention right now. The unemployment rate here in Orange County is below 4%. Um, it is difficult to attract folks to VMS. And sometimes it's difficult to retain folks to VMS when they get offers from other communities and other things with uh, more I don't want to say it's more competitive, but greater compensation and benefits, OK? The HR staff work very hard on an annual basis uh, to provide us with information about compensation 
and also benefits to make sure that we stay competitive, not at the top, and clearly not at the bottom. So we're able to recruit the kind of staff. Um, there are going to be some deep dives into some certain uh, areas where we are looking for folks and we may have to do some alternative strategies. Carrie, a new HR manager, has been going to job fairs, reaching out to local colleges and community colleges for folks who might have the skills. So she's really amping up the recruitment stuff and also main, making sure that we maintain ourselves at competitive edges. We also need to have a succession plan, especially for the top and for next layer of the organization. Succession plan doesn't automatically say that somebody gets the next job. But what it does is provides management to think about and have people ready to assume their jobs. Um, Carrie's going to introduce an employee satisfaction survey so we know have a maybe more data-centered view of how employees are feeling about their work here. She's been working on a new human resource uh, information system called Day force, I think it was day force. And um, that's been that implementation has been gone on for a while, and everybody is getting paid. That's the most important thing that does, but it also allows employees and managers to access profile data about themselves or their groups about what's going what's going on from a data perspective. Um, also, uh, we have done a lot of training with staff, particularly in areas of safety over time, but we're going to kick that up a notch to not only continue doing the safety training, but also doing hands-on training for their job, and also about how to be a better employee with customer service or for our manager, how to manage people. And then I've already talked about the competitive compensation system. OK, I'm going to switch now, because I'm not going to read you the other 50 items that are there. You can thank me later. Um, but I want to do something new that the GRF rep to, uh, from VMS uh, want to start getting you to meet some of our key managers and directors. Not only you may, you may know these people, but folks at home or maybe in the audience don't. So with that, next please, I want to introduce you to Eileen Paulin, our Marketing and Communications Manager. She has a very broad skill set. I'm not going to read those out. She is well educated, and boy, does she write well. And she's fast. Okay. So with that, I'm going to ask Eileen, where are you, Eileen? This side of me? Okay. <laughs> This is Eileen Paulin, and I'm going to interview her live, live. I'm supposed to be interviewing you, probably. <laughs> no, no, no. You could do that a different time, but this is my time to interview okay. you. OK, so Eileen, how long have you been with us in VMS? On uh, July 12th, it's going to be five months. Feels like five years. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and what's your vision for this job? Well. Um, the community had already invested in a really excellent marketing and branding uh, program. So one of my biggest visions is just to execute that. Um, you talked about transparent uh, communications. Um, we're working very hard to make sure that we're getting all the key information out to residents. Um, one of my biggest charges, though, is reaching those people that are not on electronic platforms. And uh, there are some very excellent ways of reaching those people. And one of them is my just spending time out in the community. I've attended quite a few community meetings. Um, Garden Villa Association, Gate 11, Friends of the Village. And every time I'm there, I, I meet somebody that isn't online, and we have a chance to talk. I even went and made a house call last week to somebody that you doesn't did. know how to print out the blast and was having a question about this water heater uh, postcard that a lot of people got and was concerned about it being a scam. So I printed it out and took it over to him. I can't do that every day, but 
It was really fun. Mm -hmm. So that's not a typical day. That's not typical. There so is no typical day. There is no typical day. That was one of the questions I asked. You don't know which club you're going to that well, day. First, What's going to be thrown at when you? When I read that question, I said, my typical day. Ha! Huh? Um, it's very common to come in here with a set of priorities for the day, and it gets blown out of the water a half an hour after you get in the door. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a challenge sometimes in that regard. We have an open door policy. And that's great. I get a lot of visitors in my office, as do Brad and Siobhan. We're kind of right there in that row. Um, do they visit one person, visit all three of you on the same Oh, day? that's yeah, happened. That's happened. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we compare notes, you know. <laughs> so, um, but there's always sort of seems to be something that kind of pops up that's really important. Um, a couple of examples. Um, I'm very, thank you very much for that moment of silence for Chief Rosa, because that whole situation, um, that impacted all of us. And that's one thing I want to say about my peers. They are really top-notch people. And, you know, Tim Moy made sure that those fire people and the sheriffs were so well taken care of and that if we did need to do some overflow parking or whatever we needed to do here in the village, that we could. But I didn't know about that processional until I heard the helicopters all going on. So. We had to get information out to the community as, mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, for those who might not know, uh, the fallen firefighter was taken to the funeral home that right. act is adjacent to our property, and the processional came there as well as helicopters, as right. well as. And then there was visitation people. on Friday, and um, they left early this morning before most of the people could be inconvenienced. Yeah. Um, but it, it was very moving. Obviously, that's, a, that's something that everybody feels badly about. But I really loved how everybody came together in wanting to get that word out to our mm -hmm. residents. Mm -hmm. So five months, what have you done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten some bonbons. I peeled a few what? grapes. <laughs> um, well, the birth. One minute when you're done in five Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I think most importantly is building a staff. Um, I could not be doing anything I'm doing without Becky Johnson and our new Jackie Brown, mm -hmm. who is just a dynamo. Um, we, there were no processes in place for any of the communications. So we have a project management program in place. We actually have deadlines. Imagine that. Um, and one of our first goals was just taming things like this Friday e-blast and the breeze and getting them out on the, at the right time. So um, I think we've changed the look of things quite a bit. Um, we've tried to make them a lot more appealing visually. Um, we've got still have a lot more work to do, but working with Chuck to make the website a little bit easier to navigate. Um, we have the new resident orientation. We took over the do docent mm -hmm. tours. You know, there's just there's so much, uh, but there's still a long, long way to go. Okay. Uh, what are some of the obstacles you encountered? <laughs> Other than being here till 8 o'clock every night yeah, well. with some of your <laughs> colleagues, because yes. I've been upstairs at that point. Um, rumors, I think, um, definitely. Um, there are going to be these type of gadfly people in every community. Um, I'm a little surprised at the viciousness of some of them. Um, we, we have a tendency to have residents or people that kind of pop off before they know the whole story. So that's, that's been an obstacle, and obviously as communications manager, that's something I have to, to work with. Um, but also positively, the, the, the qualifications of my peers is just amazing. It's just, it blows me over. So that, that's been a, a really nice surprise. Okay. So the surprise was the quality of your peers? Yeah. It was? Yeah. I mean, not that I, I don't know what I expected, but... Um, probably about the first week Siobhan was here, we had a little emergency, and it meant pulling together a whole bunch of department heads and doing the right thing. And nobody ever considered not doing what sure. should be done. And it required a lot of over and above, staying after work, doing, you know, contacting residents in a building. It wasn't just our department either. It was a whole group effort. And I came to work the next day just thinking, you know what, I'm really proud to be among these kind of people. It's a really nice thing to hear from an employee. It really is. Thank you. Okay. So what do you think your, your colleagues say about you? Now, you've just talked about that, you know, what you have. Are they you talking think about me? 
But I'll they, check for you. If okay, you want, are they talking right? about me behind my back? <laughs> <laughs> what would that, they say? That's a tough one. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm sure that in some regards they wish we could be, get things done faster and faster. Um, I think I'm pretty easy to work with. I try to be um, really see things from other people's points of view. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy working with many different types of personalities, and I just don't mean staff. Think of this 18,000 know, people to interact with. So I, I hope they think that I'm being congenial and respectful of them. But again, I, I don't go, don't have time to listen around. And I, I know every time I talk to Brad or he passes, she, he goes, he points to your office. He points to yours too, <laughs> yeah. Shabbat. He points to your office saying, am I lucky? Am I lucky? <laughs> Do you want to say anything about her? Oh, Siobhan. I have to embarrass Siobhan. Just that it's been a pleasure to get to know Eileen and work with her, and I look forward to what the future holds. Yeah. Okay. And um, so the last, well, the last question, and I'm going to ask you a few more. Would your, you, you were very humble in your own assessment about uh, yourself, and I wanted to know whether or not your families and friends would also agree well, they all feel that this is just a really perfect fit for me. People who know me really well are like, oh my gosh, it couldn't be more tailor-made. Um, I think my family probably wishes they saw a little bit more of me. Um, a lot of 12-hour, 14-hour days. My yes. joke was that my husband sent me a text on my way home one night and said, don't be shocked when the garage, you open the garage door. He would bought a new car, but I didn't even know he was shopping for one <laughs> because I've been so busy working. <laughs> but... Um, you know, aside from that, I think that uh, I do have done a lot of volunteer work in the uh, community, and I'm finding that I really am going to have to go off those boards. I, I thought I could juggle it. I can't. So I know a few of my volunteer people aren't too happy about that, but I think for the most part, part everybody just thinks right. it's a good fit. Yeah, I hope that your 14-hour days go <laughs> back more toward 9, 10. That's what we're working You know, for. I hope so. And just uh, for fun, what's your favorite food? Oh, wow. Okay, this is so bad, but it's a habit I've developed since I've been here. I only let myself do it once a week. A pastrami um, sub sandwich over at Jersey Mike's. <laughs> okay, that's a recommendation. Not okay. a healthy one. Not a healthy but one, but sometimes one has to feed the soul when right. one is working so Fridays hard. Fridays are Mondays in our department because okay. we're scrambling to get so much done. done. And so it's just kind of become a thing that we make a run over there. And okay. we all, I, I just want to say to you, you're lightning fast. Before uh, the chair of our own board was able to tell us who the new third appointee was to VMS, it was in the brief. <laughs> you know, blast. I had no, it was a blast. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's I guess okay. we, can, the we confuse them all so the we time, too. Them. Okay. Well, thank confused. you very thank much. You. Thank you all for your time and attention. And as always, consider coming out for a board position or a position with uh, one of the committees for the board. Thank you. Yes, yes, please. Lisa? Yes. You have just a question. Sure. Are all of these goals going to be uh, posted on the internet somehow? Eileen? <laughs> you know what? Just I tell don't, us what you want posting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I will discuss it with, uh, with the VMS board. I, I um, yes, I, I will discuss that with the VMS board, and my assumption is you would like to see these. Yes, posted. I would. Okay. Thank you. For the whole strategic plan, right? Or, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I think that we would appreciate a hard copy of what you just gave this morning, yeah. um, or at least posted uh, into our boxes or something, because it's so good. <laughs> okay, Siobhan's going to... Siobhan, my savior, who did my PowerPoint. Yes, ma'am. Okay, anything else? Lisa, thank yes. you so much. Excellent presentation. Oh, thank you. And I'm hoping that it'll be on our website, on our community website. The strategic plan right. from VMS. Yes. Okay, I will discuss this uh, with the board. We were just completing it. Um, I don't recall whether or not the old strategic plan was there, um, how it was posted or whatever, but we'll get that discussed. I don't want to make the decision for my board. Thank okay, you. anything else? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Eileen.
Next item is the CEO's report. And if you haven't noticed, Brad Hudson is not here. The day before the 4th of July, he's up in Sacramento having a ball with the legislature. If you've never experienced anything like that, uh, he's meeting and trying to, he'll be testifying in a committee over bills that serve us, uh, which is something we haven't done in the past. We are doing currently, and we're hoping to be very successful in the very near future with some positive legislation out of the California legislature. Uh, Siobhan is going to st sitting in for him, obviously, and she's going to do his report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I would like to share some quick updates with you this morning. Uh, most importantly, tomorrow is Independence Day, and we have a special celebration planned. This starts at 4 p.m. at Clubhouse 2. It features a fun zone with arts and crafts, bounce house, obstacle course, music by Doc Rocket, and food and beverages are available for purchase. Vehicle, vehicle and passenger unloading will be available at gate 12, starting at 4 p.m. There is no on-site parking. Shuttle services will be available from Clubhouse 7 and from the employee maintenance lot at 23081 Bio Campa Verde on the corner of Moulton and El Toro Road. So again, that's Clubhouse 7 and the employee maintenance parking lot for shuttle services tomorrow. And the fireworks will begin at 8.45 in the evening. So please join us for a great celebration of our nation's independence tomorrow. I have some exciting information technology updates this morning. You may have uh, noticed that we recently launched the electronic contact system. This is designed to keep residents informed on their service requests and important deadlines. This is a system used by schools, physicians, and so forth, you may have received uh, phone calls like that at your homes from your physicians and pharmacies and other uh, networks like that. What we will do is send notifications Monday through Friday between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. to you if you have a lease that is expiring. You'll receive notice 60 days in advance of your lease expiring. And if you're the leasee, you'll receive a copy for, of an application that you can submit to renew your lease. Owners will also be noticed 60 days in advance of the expiration of their leasee's uh, lease. In terms of service orders, we'll send notifications when you have scheduled an appointment, so you know when your appointment is. We'll send a reminder before that appointment occurs, and then we'll send a follow-up uh, notification letting you know that the work has been completed, and if there are any follow-up instructions for the resident, this information will be provided. So that started last week, and that's a very exciting uh, customer service advancement. Broadband Services is also excited to announce that a new high-quality digital music provider, Stingray Music, will begin on July 11th at no additional cost to our cable subscribers. This offers a full range of audio music, television channels in all genres, including rock, jazz, classical music, pop hits, and more. Residents with digital television plugged into our cable network will have the state-of-the-art music available to them. And there's also an app for your smartphone and uh, mobile devices that can be uh, used for this music application as well. So that's a very exciting advancement for our residents. And then just a reminder that on July 9th, the next series of analog television channel removals will occur. If you'll remember, this is helping to uh, advance our uh, digital cable system. And this is the third of four removals that will occur this year, making our system fully digital by the end of the calendar year. And just a reminder that residents can either uh, rent a set-top box or purchase a new HD TV to continue watching our digital offerings. And if there are residents who have analog televisions to dispose of, they can call resident services and have these removed for free. In terms of some of our upcoming projects, the annual seal coat program, which puts a slurry coat on our asphalt pavement, will begin on August 6th and run through August 20th. This protects uh, the surface from water and sun damage and seals uh, minor surface cracks in the pavement. A complete list of locations was published in last Friday's e-blast that went out to our residents. In GRF facilities, 
There are approximately eight street segments that will receive this uh, slurry coat. And residents who are affected by the project will receive a letter with information pertaining to their specific areas in advance of the project so they can prepare for the work that will be done in August. The renovation of gatehouses 4, 10, 11, and 12 continues on schedule. You might have noticed that the rehab work at gatehouse 10 is now complete with only landscaping to follow. The work has now moved to gatehouse 11 and the intent is for all the work in the gatehouses to be completed by the end of the calendar year. So we're happy to report that that's moving along well on schedule. The paddle ball, or I'm sorry, paddle tennis and pickleball court renovation project is moving forward as well. Design and engineering continues on the project and we expect to have a final draft in the next two weeks. Once the village is, accepts that final draft, the contractor can submit for permits with the city and the hope is for construction to begin at the end of July and be completed at the end of October. And then lastly, I just want to remind uh, golf cart owners that GRF requires that all golf carts be registered and the deadline was July 1st, so the deadline has passed. We anticipate that there are about 500 unregistered carts still out in the community, so we want to remind golf cart owners to come into resident services to get their golf carts registered as soon as possible because ultimately security will be issuing secure, uh, courtesy notices and then citations for those unregistered carts in the community. And again, if you have any questions about that, please contact resident services. And that concludes my presentation this morning. Yes. I'd like to consider, I'd like to consider for the renters, they do not get a lot of the information provided to us. For instance, at the traffic hearings, we get a lot of renters that come in and say, uh, gee, I was not aware of this, and I'm getting a notice of violation because my contract is doing this, or blah, 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 blah. And uh, at the last meeting, it was checked into, and one of our security guys went into the office and said, can we look into it? I think this is really, really important because we had probably, I'd say, at least eight or nine people who were renters and or leasees that had gotten notice of the violations regarding that issue. And a lot of the information is not given to them. Uh, I'm wondering if you could put something out to the fiscal owners who are renting their places to mandate that they give them this, you know, the package that Jeremy said to them. Let me do this. Let me work with Ms. Paulin, and we'll come up with a strategy to address that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Open forum. At this time, speakers may address the board of directors regarding items not on the agenda and within the jurisdiction of the board of directors of the Golden Rain Foundation. There is a maximum time limit of three minutes per speaker, and a speaker may only address the board once during this period. The board reserves the right to limit the total amount of time allotted to the open forum. Whitney, who's the first speaker, please? Pat English. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Ms. President. Good morning, members of the board and everybody else here. Thank you all for your very hard work and good service. Um, I, I could spend a lot of time on positive things, but I'm sorry I'm going to be the bad one that brings up the negative things. Um, I am in a situation where I have two properties right now, and I'm trying to sell the first one. So I have one of those intermediate agreements. Anyway, one of the problems that my realtors had, and several others have had too, is with signs for the realtors. And I really think that you need to relook the policy on the signs. For example, I have a Casa Linda, and I have the downstairs one. And the only people that come by that are those that walk along the creek. And there might be 10 people a day. So to get a purchase from that is very difficult. And then we have the inspectors. We have these inspectors who come in for the buyers, and the problem that I've had with them, and my actual sale fell through because of it, was that they are talking a lot about problems that the association has. It's not the individual units, but rather 
there was a crack in the stairs there or something like that. And the deals will fall through. And I've actually heard realtors say that they don't want to deal with United because of all the problems that they're dealing with. And these are a couple of them and some that I've been dealing with. And then the last thing is a very sensitive situation. But I've spoken to a lot of people that agree with me that we think that there's a conflict of interest on the performing arts that um, Beth, who should not be uh, the chairperson of it because of the conflict of interest with her interest in the uh, performing arts and her husband's. Anyway, that's very, and I've talked to Beth about it personally, so I'm not talking behind her back or anything like that. So thank you very much for everything. I hope you'll consider what I have to say. Thank you. Next. Cash Akrakar. Good morning, Cash. How are you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tom, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, we have excellent boards, all the mutuals as well as GRF, and we have an excellent team put together with Brad. Brad has put an excellent team. I would like to suggest a few things because few things fall off cracks. One is cul-de-sac 23, I had requested red lines be painted on both sides. Somebody came in, this was in January I suggested, and it has not been done yet. And I think it's a safety issue because people park there and creates major blind spot because there's a curve in the road there. Uh, <clears throat> and on the other side, there is uh, bushes that come in the way. So we need to do that. Second thing I would like to say about Eileen, uh, I like the open door policy and I would like to suggest that if we can, if she can put together, or if we already have, I don't know, a team that can write grants, and we can use the grant structure writers, if, since she's a, such a good writer, I'm told. So that might be another thing we might like to consider. Thank you. Question? No, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cash. Next, please. Gloria Moldau. Good morning, everybody. Gloria Moldau, 3503A, uh, Bahia Blanca. Um, I have a question that I don't know which committee to address it to, so I thought I'd bring it to all of you. And that is, I think we need CPR training in the community for residents of the community. There are times when I'm in the house, awake in the middle of the night, and I wonder, what would I do in an emergency? I may have had CPR training, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago. It's not fresh. I did make some calls around. If we offer it at all, it's very hard to figure out where it is. Uh, so I would suggest either once a month or every other month, somebody from recreation or one of the fitness centers, you just do a sign up and try to get as many people involved as possible. In my large group of friends, I only have one person who's a physical therapist and she keeps her her, her training up to date, so she's the only one who knows how. And it is on my mind, especially in our community. We might also include PSAs on Channel 6 for refresher courses. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Stone. Mary Stone, 356C. Uh, Lisa pointed out that one of the objectives of VMS is factual communication and information about the bus services. And I happened to see the bus presentation on this day, I think it was yesterday or the day before. And no, it had to be yesterday. And I was taken aback when they said grocery carts were going to be limited to 14 inches. So I thought 14 inches? Gee, I wonder if my uh, grocery cart's going to meet that, that uh, requirement. So I grabbed my trusty tape measure and went out to the carport and measured my grocery cart, which is one of the smaller ones in the carport area, and it measured 20 and a half by 19 and a half. So I went to all the other grocery carts that weren't folded up and that were open, and uh, 
None of them were 14 inches. And uh, most of them measured 23 and a half by 22. So I think we've got a problem if we're going to be limiting the grocery carts on buses to 14 inches, because nobody has a 14 inch golf grocery, I mean a grocery cart that, that I could measure in four carports. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Juanita Skillman. Good morning, Juanita Skillman, 2154N. I have a number of items, and I'd like to start out with the real positive. C.E. Richard, I do have some good things to say. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate our security department, and most of all, compliment our residents on their uh, cooperation in honoring uh, Captain Rosa. Uh, it did impact a number of people who lived through Great Gate 3 on three different occasions. And as soon as they knew what was going on, they were most cooperative. Um, some of them were scared when they didn't know what was going on because they thought it was a terrorist attack or something like that. But as soon as they knew what was going on, there was great cooperation. Secondly, I'd also like to compliment the village in their turnout for the uh, primary election last month. Laguna Woods Village had the largest percentage of voters in Orange County and one of the top in the state of California. And this is not unusual. Our residents turn out. And I think that's a wonderful thing that we should would publicize. Uh, <clears throat> in kind of a tag on to what uh, Siobhan said, uh, in case you didn't know, our village library also has this kind of a notification system. And you are notified three days before your book is due. And if you have a book on reserve, you are notified 10 minutes after it gets back uh, that you can come in and get it. So this kind of electronic notification system is, is uh, pervasive throughout the village. Uh, last but not least, uh, again, <clears throat> going along with what uh, uh, Siobhan said and the things that have been passed, when we talk about the lease notification that we're sending out to members, in United, for the co-op, we mean sub-lease. We are all leasees, and we are not going, members, residents, are not going to get those notifications. It is for sub-lessees only. So thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, one of you. Franklin Smith. Franklin, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Well, I've been busy with other things, and I got a sad story for you. Okay. Um, first of all, last night I was watching the Friday movie, and it cut off right in the middle. Never came back. So I saw half of it, and it was Tomb Raider, and not really, you know, a high-profile movie, but still you want to kind of finish it when you start it. And I have noticed going to... Last night, Monday. yeah, Monday. yeah, the Monday movie, the Monday movie that okay. starts at six o'clock, and uh, and it stopped uh, an hour and a half later with an hour to go, <laughs> and um, I have noticed uh, on our broadband page or website that um, the notifications are sometimes weeks old, so I don't know who's in charge of programming, but. Um, there is a problem. OK, um, now my problem. Um, I am under attack by a weapon known as infrasound. And these infrasound is legal as far as being able to obtain it. You can get it over the internet. And it's used for a wide variety of things, as well as pest control, um, uh, to ward off animals. Um, the police and the military use it for combat. Um, it can kill at, um, at very high power, which hopefully the public can't get their hands on, although I have noticed that military and, and police units are on eBay, and uh, there's no controls over these weapons. 
Uh, I have brought it to the attention of security, but it's not really their forte. I have brought it to the attention of the Orange County Police Department, which has what is known as a LRADS. It's a long range acoustical device, which they use primarily for, uh, it's a speaker, it's a sound system. And they use it to, because it has this incredible technology, it can actually broadcast into uh, a huge number of people. They use it for riot control and, um, uh, and for dispersing uh, crowds that are, you know, disobedient, aren't following the rules. And they rarely use this, although the city of Santa Ana used it to um, get uh, 10 gangsters to um, surrender where they were barricaded in a house. Uh, my time is running out. Um, there's a tremendous amount of material. This is about 10% of what I have. Uh, it's a very big topic, and, um, and I'm under attack, and I, I don't have time to give you all the details. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine LaPaglia. Good morning. I'm Catherine LaPaglia, 818Q. And I would first of all like to thank the board members for your time and service and your commitment. Um, as a resident, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm here to say that I'd like to go on the record to oppose any reduction of seating in the Performing Arts Center. Um, with the renovation that's coming up or the remodeling. Um, I've noticed that the majority of the events currently are sold out with the current number of seats that we have, the champagne pops, the tribute to the bands. Um, the emeritus uh, guest lecture series is wonderful, and that's often almost all, always sold out, or there's a lot of attendees. Um, at first, I was... My understanding was that it was going to be 20% of the seats, and then I heard it was just 20 seats to make more knee room or maybe make the seats wider for heavier people. But you know, on the airlines, they have, in some rows, they have the arms that go up. So if somebody needs to purchase two seats, they can do that, or I guess sit on the floor seating. But um, the last meeting, I spoke briefly to Brad Hudson, and he recommended raising ticket prices to re reduce attendees. And I, to reduce, to, uh, to increase uh, ticket prices to reduce attendees. But I absolutely think that's not the way to go. Um, this is an active community. We have more and more residents moving in that are um, more of the, in the baby boomer age and like to participate in the clubs, the community events, and all of the things that the Performing Arts Center offers. With Clubhouse Five, that was thought to, at that time, was going to alleviate a lot of um, the problems with having a lack of seats. But I think that we've already almost outgrown Clubhouse Five. If you try to go to the comedy club, the Chicago club, um, the dances, many of the events there, it's, it's hard to get a seat. So um, I'm just here to say that I oppose any reduction in the seating of the Performing Arts Center and I'm counting on the GRF board to have the foresight and the vision to look ahead and see that we are, are going to have uh, people who want to continue to attend these events and potentially an increase. I mean, I would hope that we would have an increase in the village for people who want to go to our Performing Arts Center. So thank you for your time. Thank you. That's it. OK. Item 10, responses. I guess we should start with Pat English. Chauvin, you want to address that, please? Yes, actually, we are looking at realtor signs. Uh, the state regulation recently changed, so what needs to be displayed on the signs has been revised, so we're looking at the, pro uh, the project program holistically, and you should see something on that in the near future. And uh, Annette, I'm sure that will, the Security Committee will uh, be involved in that. Yes, that's on our radar. Can yes. I ask a question? All Please. right, two comments. One is, are we talking about home inspectors, like you pay an inspector to come? No, the realtor, the city, when you're selling. City inspectors, or, or no, it's, it's, 
And the buyer's inspector is, we have no control over them, right? So Correct. Right. And we're not even a housing mutual, so that surprised me. And I would like to make a comment. I don't know Beth's position on it, but I don't think that Beth does, a, I think Beth does a good job at the Forming Arts Center. And I think the fact that you know something about a building or, um, or use it, I don't think that should be a negative. That should be positive. Beth is still just one vote on the committee. In fact, often the chairs of the committees don't vote. And so I would rather she lead the committee because she knows something about it than to get one of us that have absolutely no idea uh, because we don't use the building. That just wanted to weigh in. Thank you. Beth? Pat has spoken to me about her concern and her opinion that I should not chair that committee. However, I say, wait a minute, what do we want? What does that committee we want? We want a safe building, we want a functional building, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing. Um, my husband is an actor and he acts in the community sometimes. So I really don't think that that makes me prejudiced about a building. Um, I still want safe, functional, and aesthetically pleasing building. There's, there was another comment um, from Catherine about the Performing Arts Center and the reduction in seating. And we have not addressed that exactly. It's been, we've been talking about it, and we really won't address that until at least the second phase, which will be at least two years from now when we'll be talking about it. The latest thing that I've heard in the discussion is that it would be no more than one seat per row. So it would be very few seats that would be eliminated to make them, to, to work on having it be, um, there's a concern with the steps and having the steps be um, equal with the seating, and there's also the the leg room as well as the width. It's 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 all of the above. Yeah, uh, Catherine. Again, we're phasing it, and that's going to that that discussion or decision won't be for a couple of years. So, you got you got at least a couple of years not to even worry about it. Uh, but pay attention. Come to their meetings. Please, we welcome your input. Okay. Um, oh, Judith, sorry. I'll address two people. Um, one, what Pat English said, um, I don't have a problem with Beth chairing that committee. However, I lost my best advisor on the M&V because there was a conflict of interest that Gloria Maldow was married to a GRF director. But Beth's husband sits on the PAC committee with her. Now, he's non-voting. But if there was a conflict of interest, that might be one, not her. And then the second thing I want, um, Mary Stone, the grocery cart issue. <laughs> this is visual aids. Um, this is a grocery cart that is 17 inches. But you can get a 14-inch one that looks just like this on Walmart.com in the $25. But um, I have, thank you. Uh, Compassion for all the, all the people that have been calling me and emailing me that they don't have $25 to go out and buy another grocery cart or they feel imposed upon that they have to. So this um, rule will be going back to the committee for all those who are concerned about it because um, the rule was changed without committee input even though, you know, it's not a real expense to anybody or to GRF, but we will look at that. But I understand staff's point of view the new buses, I mean, if we have six riders and they all have a cart, there's no place to tie them down. And so that's what we're going to have to look at. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, Diane. And just to follow up, Mary, you were looking at carts that people use to take um, uh, groceries from their cars to their homes? Or were these? I, I know, but are they, I'm just saying, are they bus riders? Like, we don't, I'm just saying, I think a lot of people have grocery carts that don't get on buses. And so I don't know that it, uh, that's all I'm saying. You, you did, sir. If, if you have a cart mm -hmm. and you're going to take a bus occasionally, like I do, Got it. you know, the cart is there. Whether I take it just from the car to the house mm -hmm. or whether I'm on a bus, it's the same cart. Yeah, it's in the newsletter, and this is going to be part of my report, but on the front of the newsletter is a picture of the cart, so it's clear what kind of a cart we're talking about. We're talking about the personal shopping cart 
and the dimensions are right there on the newsletter, and that'll be part of my report later. Yes, Ray. Yeah, I have two things. Uh, regarding the uh, Tomb Raider movie, <clears throat> in a pamphlet it says it's 122 minutes. At 8.32, it was still going, but it was, it was not the movie. It was commercial and, and everything to do with what's going on. This is very common. I, I tape Mondays and Friday movies quite a bit, and this is very common. Uh, I agree with you, it should not stop in the middle and that should be redone. Uh, it, but just to let you know, that happens all the time. Regarding the good fire captain, uh, I went over to the mortuary last week. When you're a retired policeman or retired fire investigator, you're part of a membership. There were four, four people there that were in attendance to see what could be done to help people, uh, to do any visitation, whatever, two captains and two battalion chiefs. And uh, they were very helpful with me for me to show my respect. However, they were not allowing just anybody to come in because of, of what would have going on. In fact, one of the mortuary people came to and says, would you folks just hold it down just a little bit? Now, I believe that one of the, the, the captain or the Italian chief should have been outside, perhaps, but that was their choice. But they were very respectful, and I was able to pay my respects. Um, my only comment, uh, I see no evidence to remove Beth from this uh, committee chair, uh, nor will I do that at this point. She will remain as chair of that committee. Yes. I just want to tell Gloria, I think the idea of a general CPR training is a good one, mm -hmm. and I hope that security and uh, recreation will look into it and, and maybe implement some classes for general residents who want to uh, update or uh, and learn CPR training. Lynette? I think that that, uh, okay, first I'll go with Gloria about the uh, need for CPR training for residents in the community. Right now, we're very busy, uh, security is very busy training their own staff and the VMS employees. And I think that's on their agenda, but it's a later time once we get all the people that they've hired, all their new hires up and coming and trained. But I will bring that up. I know uh, on a personal side, you know, you can take a Red Cross class if it's that important to you, and uh, because they do offer those. You can get on their website and check that out, but I will put that up for security. The second one would be uh, cash about cul-de-sac 23. This is the second time, I believe, that you brought this up, so we will be looking at that at the next security meeting, which is uh, August the 22nd. I'm sorry, 27th. It's now going to be held on the fourth Monday of the even month, so it's August 27th at 1.30, but we will definitely uh, mm -hmm. bring that up and I'll talk to the chief about that. The same way about the CPR training. And then the last thing I have on my list is Franklin Smith, the LRADS, Long Range Acoustical Device System. I will uh, speak to the chief about that. I, I'm very much a newcomer and I'll refer this to him and, and talk to him about how to best handle that and contact you. Yeah. I uh, leave it. The best thing I can do is mm -hmm. talk to the chief, and then I'll, I'll contact you. Okay. All right. I believe Bert had a comment. Uh, just cash. I'm not sure what you're asking for with the red line. Uh, is it from going into the cul-de-sac, or is it on the street side? No, it's off of here. It's not on the fence right there. And it's going into the cul-de-sac. So it's going into the cul-de-sac. Going into the cul-de-sac, in the cul-de-sac. That, that is a mutual responsibility, not GRF. And your board can handle that directly. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. Actually, there's, there's some interest in terms of who owns the okay. curb to a GRF street. Uh, and that's been up in the air. And it really has not been resolved. Maybe that's why the delay. Because so take it up with your mutual board. Okay. And you Thank need you. to contact the fire department on that as well. Yes. Absolutely. Just a, mm -hmm. Judith is next. Uh, I forgot to tell Gloria, uh, the disaster preparedness team uh, gives a class every month. And the first one month, it'll be adult CPR. Then the following month, it'll be infant CPR. Then the following month, it'll be 
good neighbor building captains training, then it goes back to adult CPR, and we've been doing that for years. So if you stop by the office on the first floor, uh, they're open every day from uh, 9 to 11, or 10 to 12, and then they'll give you a schedule of when the next CPR class is. So we do give them, pre, you know, well, quarterly. I didn't think of the gas comparator, but should we put that in the paper? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, every, every so often. Uh, it's, we have a newsletter, but I couldn't find a schedule to bring today. But, but we do have a schedule, and it's got the whole year. And do you remember, uh, Juanita, when the next CPR class is? We just had one last month, so it'll be probably September. Yeah, it's the same. Mm. They are open to everybody. Yes, people think it's just for me. Yes, no, it's everybody. You're supposed to get one-time cash, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, what I would say is about the uh, TNBC, the, the Good Neighbor Captain meeting coming up. Next week on the 10th, maybe it will cover some information for people who want to attend. Okay. Yes, Beth. I wanted to say thank you to Gloria. I think it's a great idea to have TV6 have some kind of a PSA or whatnot about um, CPR training, maybe a refresher or something like that. Good idea. Well, as you can see, we will respond and we will handle concerns directly from residents. Uh, we will get back to you and we will solve things. Um, frankly, I'm thrilled to death with the list that was brought before us this morning. I can remember not too long ago, this list would have been probably doubled and the issues would have been much more difficult, to say the least. Uh, so I think this board is doing something right. So we'll continue to work with the residents and we will handle their concerns as a priority by this board. Thank you. Next, uh, keep in line, consent calendar item 11 and 12, unfinished business. Uh, we have none of either. So we'll skip right down to 13, new business. A. Entertain a motion to introduce a resolution to amend the GRF electronic payment policy. So moved. Electronic payment policy. Whereas Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods Village, GRF, has adopted several electronic payment methods over the years, and whereas credit card payments are accepted at several point of sale locations, such as those used at the Village Greens, Resolution 9011-102, Broadband Services, Resolution 9012-130, and the Performing Arts Center, Resolution 9014-01, and the associated merchant processing fees absorbed into operations at these revenue-generating operations. And whereas GRF offers an electronic payment method for monthly assessments called Easy Pay, and 70% of Laguna Woods Village members take advantage of this free auto debit service to automatically deduct assessments from their bank accounts, while other members use their own online bank banking service to generate electronic payments. Both of these low cost services continue without user fees. <coughs> And whereas GRF desires to increase electronic payment options for assessments and introduce options for chargeable services. And whereas GRF has initiated a service agreement to process electronic payments via the community's residential portal and in person at the community center, which will be activated once the technology infrastructure is in place. Now, therefore, be it resolved on July 3rd, 2018, comma, that GRF introduces the acceptance of electronic payments for assessments, fines, fees, and chargeable services, and resolved further for assessments, comma, the payor will be charged a convenience fee equal to an amount necessary to offset all processing fees contracted with the merchant provider currently 2.95% per credit card transaction, and resolved further, fees will be updated as needed based on contractual agreements and passed on to the payor without further resolution updates, and resolved further, 
that resolution 9018-21 adopted May 1st, 2018, comma, is hereby superseded and canceled and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. Since this is the first reading, I move that we accept this proposal for discussion purposes only, but the actual vote will be delayed by 30 days. That's correct. Second. Second. Beth, any other discussion? I'll, oh, Judith? I, I just want clarification. Uh, I'm in favor of this. However, the fourth whereas, GRF desires to increase electronic payment options for assessments and introduce options for chargeable services. Since my assessment, like this says, automatically comes out of my debit card, does that mean now I'm going to get charged when I wasn't before? No. no. If you've made the arrangement through your debit card, through your bank, no. No. You're, no. You are already in the system. This is for a credit card. No. no. Oh, okay. So that's automatic debit. has nothing to do with my credit yeah, card. I get right. it. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Now, remember, uh, this is uh, postponed 30 days uh, to August to comply with 4360 Civil Code. B, entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for non-return ID cards. Okay, just a second. This is uh, 13B as in boy. Right. Okay. <clears throat> You'll find it on the white addendum. Yes. Resolution, uh, attention, attachment to resolution 9018XX, non return fee of identification card fee ID. Whereas the Golden Rain Foundation requires that all individuals approved to reside in the village register and carry an ID card with them at all times. And whereas the resident services department issues ID cards and vehicle decals when a resident is approved to reside in the unit. And whereas there has been an average of 60 residents per month not returning ID cards upon ending their lease or selling their unit. Now, therefore, be it resolved, July 3rd, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces a fee of $125 for non-return of ID cards, and resolved further that the Board of Directors of this corporation reaffirms its non-return fee of $125 for vehicle decals, and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized to carry on behalf of this corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. This is the first reading, and so I move that we accept this resolution for the purpose of discussion and that it be postponed 30 days for final approval per Civil Code 4360. I'll second the motion. Judith seconds it. Any discussion? <coughs> Judith. Uh, some people have come to me to complain about this when they saw it in the agenda. But the 125 is an incentive for people to return their ID cards. We're talking about these blue ones here. Another incentive should be for those people, let's say if you have a two-bedroom unit like I do, the third person when my husband was alive, we paid $50 a month extra. Now we've increased that to $100 a month for that extra person. If you have a three-bedroom and four people reside, you're paying $100 extra for that fourth person. If you don't return your card when they move or pass on or whatever, you're going to be continued to charge, be charged that $100 per person because they don't know that person's left. So, and when you turn the card in, then they take that person off your account and they reduce your assessments by that $100. So if you don't turn them in, you're being charged $100 a month that you shouldn't be, and that's a lot more than just a $125 one-time fee. So you should have incentive to return your card so you're not paying $100 a month for that person who has left. Thank you. Bert, uh, you had uh, your I, hand up. Yeah. I just need an explanation of the attachment one. I'm trying to figure out what that relates to. 
In other words, those charges, is that what we collected? Um, uh, we're saying. What are you looking at? Which page? ID charges. Is that new, new ID cards? Is that. I mean, no, what is it? These are ID charges for cards that weren't returned. Apparently, there are that many cards that are not returned. Is that the amount collected? Uh, yeah, collected. that's my understanding. I don't understand what the chart represents. That's my problem. It, it's just not clear. I think the chart, well, it's $25, so 26 times $25 under United, it's $650 that they had to, that they've charged people to get the cards back. Or they've charged people that didn't return in the cards. So that's $25 per? They have 25, so if you took, on the blue column, it's, it's $25 per, and it looked like the uh, third looked like it was $50. That that's, what, that that's what they were charging. That's a horrendous amount. A horrendous amount of outstanding $125? cards. No, no. The, the, if we're charging, these represent the $25 charges. Mm -hmm. If I divide $25 into these figures, that's a very large number. Of, of people that have not returned, right? Correct. Yes. 187. Huge problem. It's a huge problem. Huge problem. In 2017, it was 187, and in only three months, it's 82. The part I don't understand <laughs> is if I own a property and I lease it, and then people don't turn in the card, you still let me lease it again? Don't, isn't there a requirement that your first lessees have to return and have to turn in their cards? But I guess that's... To, like maybe they can't do, administer that. I don't know. That's this, a whole other issue that we need to look at. Does this does this represent what we collected? Well, need is here, so it's really the mutuals collected. I don't know, but it, what it what it appears to say to me is that in 2017, the the seven months I think, or however many months it is, six months, that there were 186 cards that weren't returned, and United charge in United, and they charged 4,675. Mm -hmm. Dollars. That that's what they collect. I don't know if you collected it, but you charged it. And then in third, it was 190, and they charged 93.85. I don't know if this is charged or actually collected. That, that's I don't know right. that. That's what I'm curious to know whether okay. what it is. We have a chart has dollars on it, but I don't know what those dollars represent. It says charges, ID card charges. Right. Did you collect that? These are the charges. Just charges, yes. okay. No collection. This is not the collection data. No, this is the charge. This Thank is you. the charge data. Thank you. Juanita. Juanita. If I may, United last year put in a, uh, passed a resolution saying that chargeable services, traffic violations, fees, those types of things would be turned over to our collection agency. They had not been in the future. They are now, and we have a very, very small percentage of non-payment of about uh, 26 people, and that's all of those different charges. Since so you did, since you our, did that, our, yeah, we saw it was a problem, and we turned it over to our collection agency. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Judith. Um, I don't know about United, but speaking for Third, these 82 people, is there a way for staff, just out, out of curiosity? to go back and look at these manners and see how many people have the extra uh, individual occupant that they're paying that $100. And maybe you could tell them, you know, we're gonna continue to charge you that $100 a month for someone who's not there because you haven't turned in the card and see how much money we're really making. But that money goes to the mutual, doesn't go to GRF, but that would be an interesting data. That it appears to me that that would be a thing for third board to deal with. It's there. Yeah, but staff is, works for third board, yeah. We also have a speaker on this item. Okay. Mary Stone. Mary. charging and you're talking about collection fees and things of that nature, it seems to me that, that this money should be collected up front and then refunded. You know, and it also seems to me that that, that instead of $125, uh, it should be $25 that you retain and then that you give back only 100 because you still have to process these cards and like a, a lost or stolen ID card, you're charging $25. So 
it should be $125 up front, but $100 is re returned when you get the card. If you don't get the card, they lose the $100. That pays the administration fee, and you're not worried about collection accounts or anything like that. If they don't want to collect the $100, fine. We'll put that towards the administrative cost. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Regarding that, Mary, we uh, originally passed a uh, motion, and then we had to withdraw that motion based, and it was exactly like what you're stating. However, when we took it to finance, we found out that it was too onerous to implement. And this is the way that is the uh, most feasible, because we do have a lot of um, long-term rentals here, because, you know, 27%, I know, and third of our places are rented. This is and so when we have people that do a non-return, um, we are addressing the 60 people per month, but the other people that, uh, you know, keep on renewing their leases, we didn't want to have to keep track of. It's just too much on staff with all the other things we're doing here in finance. So this is the reason that we implement, we, we passed, or we're starting, and we requested this. Yeah, but if you, if you have long-term leases, they can keep their ID cards. They don't have to get a new card every year, do they? No. The, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't, I, this is for clarification purposes. It's not that. It's keeping the $100 or the 125 and keeping track of it on a yearly basis for all of the leasees. That is too onerous a task. I, I have a hard time with that because we have a lot of absurd charges. And thank, thank you, Mary. Thank you, thank you for your input. This is not a debate. It's not time for discussion. Um, so my my question is, um, do we want to include the writing in here somewhere uh, to, that we're charging this to offset our administrative costs and to deter individuals who aren't returning? Like, do we need to add that? That was my only question. Think so. I don't think so. I know we have. Okay, no further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? One, it carries. Okay, C, 13C, discuss, consider, approving the proposed amendment to the trust agreement to extend its term. Okay, <laughs> we have a resolution? No. Oh, proposed amendment, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let me read to you, if you haven't looked already, the discussion of what we're doing. At this point, we're making an amendment to the trust which eliminates the uh, number, the people who are still alive, and that's all we're doing. It's not to do to extend the trust right now. It's to eliminate the group of people that are still alive. Let me read to you the discussion. Either the passage of 60 years from March 2nd, 1964, or 21 years after the death of the last of the above persons will trigger termination of the trust. Preliminary research indicates that one or more of the above persons are alive. March 2nd, 2024 is 60 years from March 2nd, 1964. And since this is less than 21 years from the present, the trust will terminate on March 2nd, 2024. Therefore, the immediate purpose of the proposed amendment is to ensure the trust does not terminate on March 2nd, 2024. Secondly, by amending the trust to remove the contingency for termination based on the date of the last to die of the above individuals, the possibility of the trust unknowingly terminating is eliminated. The proposed amendment provides certainty and manageability. And the amendment, which is not a resolution as yet, this is for, it's proposed, is on page 75 of 84. That is the amendment. And it's section six of the trust. So section six of the trust agreement is, in, is deleted in its entirety and replaced with the following. Do you want me to read section six? No. No. Okay. You can look up section, section six on page seven of 84, but this is page 75 of 84. It will be replaced with 
This trust is and shall be irrevocable by and shall not be subject to alteration, modification, or amendment by trustee, except as provided in paragraph C of section seven hereof. The trust may at any time or from time to time be altered, modified, or amended by written instrument executed by trustee and by all the cooperatives which have at such time become and then remain beneficiaries of the trust. The trust may at any time be terminated by the written election delivered to trustee of all the cooperatives which have at such time become and then remain beneficiaries of the trust. If any beneficiary shall have assigned its beneficial interest hereunder, consent of the assignee shall also be required for any such alteration, modification, amendment, or termination. The trust shall, in all events, terminate if it has not earlier been terminated or further extended by amendment, consistent with the Act and the Rule Against Perpetuities 20 years from March 2nd, 2024. Promptly following termination of this trust, the trustee shall render an accounting to each of the beneficiaries and shall distribute all of the trust estate subject to any debts and, uh, or, sorry, subject to any debts of or charges against the trust estate, including but not limited to obligations, if any, of the trust estate to the trustee to the beneficiaries in the form of undivided interests proportional to their respective trusted sums. That's the end of the reading. Are we approving the proposed amendment? No. No. Discussion. Yeah. Bert. Yes, I'm just a little concerned about the use of the term cooperatives, uh, seeing that uh, we do have a cooperative uh, HOA and then we have a uh, HOA, which is non-cooperative, okay, which basically... Um, but as it refers to the trust, yeah. they're cooperative. So I would, I would almost like to recommend we change where the word cooperative is used, change that to trust stores. Uh, this is a suggestion for you. That's a suggestion. That's a suggestion, yes. yes. Uh, Mike. Okay. Or you could say trust. Let's look at trust. the Anyone definitions. else? Well, I guess I would think that our attorneys have looked at this, but yes. um, and they wrote they it. And yeah. my guess is that cooperatives, cooperatives, the term cooperatives is defined in here, and yes. it, it must include both the co-op and the it. Condos. It does, but I still think it would be better to to provide further clarification by basically saying trust stores. It, it, there's no question about it then. That's a suggestion. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yes, Annette? I think that this facilitates a smooth transition, this extension, and I know it needs the approval of the mutuals and, uh, you know, the towers, but this is a, uh, I think according to the, uh, it would not extend the termination date of the trust agreement more than 90 years from the date of its creation. And basically, when you add all the dates together, I did it, it came up to 80 years. I am really so for this, having looked at Leisure World um, in Seal Beach, and they had, st I know when I was running for the GRF board, I mentioned this, they were running, they were looking at the same thing about extending theirs or redoing all their documents, and after a year and many committees and lots of legal fees, they came up with uh, just extending their trust, which is what we're trying to do without a lot of legal fees. Thank you. Okay. That's we have a speaker on this item. Pat English? Mary Stone. Oh, Mary Stone. <laughs> Just make it short because Pat's behind you. Yeah, yeah, Pat's behind me. She's anxious. Okay. I just want to point out that if you look at page 13 of 84, that says Exhibit B. And if you go to page 30, you will see that that from that point forward, Exhibit B has been replaced. So for, there are quite a few pages, about 16 pages in this trust agreement that you have that have been replaced. They are no longer, they are no longer uh, usable as far as, as dealing with the trust. And as far as Bert is concerned, if you will look at 
page. Um, I'm, I'm aware of that, Mary. Okay, you got it? Okay. Yep. Because it's right here in, uh, Black it starts with uh, page 56. Yeah, no, I, I'm well aware of that. I read okay. that. Okay. But I still think it's. Pat? Needs Pat English, Ninth Way Day. I would just like to remind all of you that we have, we're very fortunate to have one expert in this trust and in the co-ops, and that is um, the United uh, Attorney, Jeff Beaumont. And we do not want to be going outside of anything he has suggested. And I understand that the lawyers have already got an agreement now, yes. and if we start pussyfooting and, and changing this and that and everything else, we'll end up in a mess like we were last time. Thank you. I, uh, I agree with you, Pat. Okay. okay. Just to clarify, Jeff has done looked at all yes. the attorneys. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We, yeah. okay. He wrote it. It's all, it's all done, yes. Okay. Well, just a recommendation. You can recommend. We can vote to recommend. Okay. We'll vote. We will vote to recommend approval of this. We have one more speaker. No. No. Not yet. Done. Sir. Any discussion? I move that we uh, recommend this amendment as our uh, the GRF approve it as a, a recommendation. Second. Discussion? Yes, no. sir? No. Can you say there's one more person? No. No. Yes, Juanita Stillman. Oh. Sorry, Juanita. Juanita Stillman, 2154 N. I would like to speak in favor of this and ask you to approve it. Uh, <clears throat> All we're doing is extending yes. the time of the trust. Now, a lot of proposals have come through to our board and to other boards of sections of the trust that are outdated, that are incorrect, that need to be modified, et cetera. This will give us time to do that, but I don't want to muddy the waters with a bunch of amendments right now uh, for the trust. All we're doing is extending the trust, and okay. if each of our boards passes this and it's up for everybody in July, then a corporate members meeting in August, the first part of August, will uh, officialize this, make it there. And then uh, if individual boards want to look at uh, amending parts of it, as our board does, uh, we can do it after that. But let's get this done without muddying any waters. Absolutely. Okay, no more discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Approved. The recommendation. Okay. Yes. Now. Okay. Um, D. 13D. Entertain a motion to approve the resolution for claiming July as a National Parks and Recreation Month. Designation of July as Parks and Recreation Month. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including Laguna Woods Village, and whereas our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region, and whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens, and whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction, and whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and re natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, 
and produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas Laguna Woods Village recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources, now therefore be it resolved July 3rd, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby designates July 2018 as National Parks and Recreation Month in Laguna Woods Village, and resolve farther, further that the officers and agents of this community are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move we accept this resolution. Second. Jim, any discussion? Mr. Palmer. Yes, I'd like to refer, <coughs> excuse me, refer to the war, uh, fourth Microphone. and fifth whereas. <coughs> I'm not trying to <coughs> disparage uh, Parks and Recreation because I think they're doing a terrific job. But paragraph the fourth is, I don't think it has anything to do with uh, recreation. And the fifth, same. Uh, I don't see where it fits in with their program of improving water quality, groundwater, preventing flooding. I mean, these are extraneous issues that I think have nothing to do with this resolution. So Any other discussion? We have one speaker. Yes, Mary. Yeah. It's me again, Mary Stone, 356C. Although many of our new employees have a municipality type background, proclaiming a national anything month is, is inappropriate for a community association. We can recognize and celebrate with special events, but we don't have to declare or designate. It was designated in 1985. And, uh, you know, it's just the purpose of GRF as it's stated in our articles, is it's, it's a nonprofit mutual benefit corporation formed to provide services and community facilities to its members and act as a trustee of the GRF Trust for the mutuals. It is not a city. It doesn't proclaim anything. It doesn't designate anything. It's inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Palmer. Yeah, I would like to, to recommend that we strike paragraph four, the fourth and the fifth paragraph. Are you making That's a motion an amendment, to do yes. that? Yes. Is there a second to, for this amendment? No second, no vote. Okay, no further discussion. We're voting on the, the resolution. All in favor? Opposed? Two. Passes. Okay, item 14. Committee reports. We're going to start out. Uh, Finance Committee, Director Phelps. Okay, I will. Sorry. No, no. It's on. Well, I'm just waiting for the slides to come up. So I could dance, but. <laughs> You couldn't see me, but I could sing, but you wouldn't want me to do that, so. <laughs> I could tell the joke, but don't know any. Um, I can tell you that we have a new controller. His name is uh, Steve Hormuth. He replaces Solange, replaced Solange Backus. There we go. Okay. So we'll start off with the review of the May 31st, 2018 preliminary financial statements. Uh, through the end of May, total revenue for GRF was 17934000 compared to expenses of 17013000 resulting in net revenue of 921000 Next slide. There we go. <clears throat> this chart shows activity in operations separate from reserves. In operations, we had a surplus of $152,000 through the end of May after backing out depreciation, which is not funded through operations. Slide three. Uh, 
When comparing actual results to budget, GRF was worse than budget by $102,000. Slide three shows where there was the most significant variance between actual results and the amount budgeted. The most significant unfavorable variance was the trust facilities fees, which were higher than uh, which were lower than budget, oh, were higher for the month of budget, in, sorry, they were higher than budget for the month of May, but year to date they were under budget. This is because most of the receipts in the first quarter were from escrows that were opened in 2017. Escrows opened after January 1st reflect the increased fee of $5,000. Although revenue came in lower than budget, we did not experience a favorable, we did experience a favorable variance in employee compensation, which was due to lower medical expenses and fewer non-union retirement contributions. However, this favorable variance was partially offset by higher security expense, overtime required for additional patrol hours, temporary help required to cover open positions, and missed meal penalties resulted, resulted from conversion to a new timekeeping system. Uh, that was day force that, um, uh, was talked about earlier. We also had a favorable variance in utilities. Our electrical usage is running 19% lower than budgeted, and professional fees, we had lower audit and tax fees. Slide four. On this pie chart, we show by category non-assessment revenues received to date of $5.3 million. Our largest revenue operation was broadband services, followed by trust facilities fee, golf operations, and so forth. Non-assessment revenue keeps down our assessments. Slide five. Expenses. Ex expenses to date of just over 17 million are shown by category on this pie chart. The largest categories are compensation, cable TV, depreciation, utilities, and insurance professional and legal. Next slide. Uh, the reserve and contingency fund adjusted balances are, sh are shown on slide six. Starting with the first column on the left, the funds show a combined balance of 200, uh, I'm sorry, of 27,660,000 ,60, as of the end of May. Included in this total are contributions received this year through assessments, trust facilities fees, and interest earnings. The second column shows the work in progress of uh, $4,389,000, which are amounts that have been spent to date on projects still in process, in progress. The third column shows the net of the first two columns, uh, the net adjusted fund balances or cash balances of 23,271,000. Slide seven. In an effort to give you more meaningful information on GRF reserve expenditures, we've added slide seven, a summary of our detailed reserve expenditures report. Column one shows we had appropriations as ju of just over $20 million approved as of May 31st. Included in, the, in this figure are all 2018 capital plan items and supplemental appropriations, as well as amounts approved in prior years that were carried over for completion. This figure will increase as GRF approves supplemental appropriations during the year. The second column reflects expenditures and is titled incurred to date or what has been paid since the funding was approved. We can see that just over 7.4 million has been booked as of May 31st. This figure will increase during the year as expenditures are made. The final column shows $12.3 million, the remaining encumbrances. This is the amount approved by the board for open projects that has not yet been spent. Okay, that's it for the slides. I hope the additional information on our appropriations is helpful. I remind you that much more detail is provided in the GRF Finance Committee meeting agenda packets, which are available online and at GRF Finance Committee meetings. At our June meeting, we suggested changes to the coupon books. We don't have a July meeting, but the treasurers of GRF United and Mutual 50 uh, will meet to discuss mutual issues and concerns. Our next scheduled finance meeting will be Wednesday, August the 22nd at 1.30 in, the, in this boardroom. Representatives from Merrill Lynch and BlackRock will give a portfolio review of not only GRF's investments, but United's thirds and Mutual yeah. 50's as well. 
You're welcome to attend. If you have any questions that you want me to ask them, in advance you can send me an email and I'll make sure that, that they get it. Other items on the August agenda may include the trust facilities promissory note, um, uh, elect, and just, that's in just a question of, of wording and administer, administ administrative charges and prepayment options. Electric vehicle charging station uh, usage and fee analysis. Reserve expenditures report status updates. Lastly, I'll remind you that we are in budget season. If you're interested in the budget process, you are welcome to attend our meetings. If you look on the governance calendar, you'll see GRF has meetings in July on Monday the 9th and Wednesday the 11th. Um, they, the mutuals also have meetings this month, so if you're interested in attending them, I think for all of us, you're wel all of them, you're welcome. And that's it for the Finance Committee report. Thank you very much, Diane. Okay, B, uh, Community Activities Committee, Director Parrott. Our next meeting will be July 19th at 1 o'clock here in the boardroom. On the last meeting. Got it. Got it. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, maintenance construction, Director Matson. We had a uh, meeting on uh, June the 13th, and as in order to uh, be um, efficient with our time, um, we added a, uh, a, and an item was added to our agenda, which is the West Creek situation. And uh, at the same time, we uh, decided to take a bus tour over to uh, West Creek. Anybody know where West, West Creek is? You do know. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, and um, <clears throat> what this is a, uh, for you folks that do not know, where this is, but it's on the west side of uh, Gate 11, and what it is, it's a a, a a wash area where during a rainstorm, all the rain that accumulates and runs off ends up in this place called West Creek, and it's similar to uh, what United has in their um, little creek that they have. If you follow the United's creek down and under the road, it opens up to a huge wash area. And West Creek is the um, Gate 11 wash area. It's just massive. It's about probably 40 feet wide, um, maybe 30, 20 to 30 feet deep. And it uh, runs for a couple hundred yards. And it drains out into the um, undeveloped area on the west side of uh, Laguna Woods Village and, uh, and it runs off someplace, probably ends up in the ocean some, someplace. But anyway, um, we, uh, what, what this is, is a, um, um, an area where people, primarily in Gate 11, um, can walk their dogs. And it's a, a real nice looking area. And, and they have uh, requested that GRF uh, provide some benches, a uh, total of maximum of four benches along this 200-yard this, uh, uh, pathway. And um, so we um, decided that would be okay. But um, when, so we came back here for our meeting, and, and it started about a half an hour later than it was supposed to have because of the time it's been at West Creek. Anyway, um, we got back, and uh, that was one of the items on the agenda. If, uh, looking at the agenda, um, the, it was very minimal this time, and so um, the, um, the main thing was turned out to be this West Creek uh, discussion. Also, uh, one of the things we did is to discuss, um, because there was uh, not too much on the agenda, we took a lot of time with our project log. Currently, there are 33 items on the GR project log, and, um, and Ernesto, our staff uh, person, 
um, made um, uh, <coughs> plenty of comments to satisfy the folks, or I may say folk, that um, had questions on our on on that. <coughs> Our next meeting is the um, second Wednesday in uh, um, next next month. So that's uh, so. This is let's see. Anyway, the second uh, Wednesday um, uh, next month, and uh, starts at nine thirty. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, report of performing arts center. Renovation Ad Hoc Committee, Director Parrott. The committee met on June 22nd, and to, we had a general overview of the of the progress and outline kind of of what had been ha what has been happening since 2015 to the present in the renovation process, and then our CEO gave us. Um, a little bit more of a background with the selection of the architect and um, and also discuss the possibility of raising funds toward this renovation with a group that's being formed to fund, to raise funds, the village, the, uh, the village, Community Fund, yeah. the Village Community Fund, I keep saying that incorrectly. Anyway, the Village Community Fund, which we're, that group is looking toward raising funds, uh, first of all, for this renovation, and then in the future for the renovation of other clubhouses. So our CEO, Brad, talked about that. And then he said, OK, for the first, first stage, and this stage, will, there will be several stages in the renovation of this building. And to start out with, they're going to look at remember safety first, so the theatrical rigging they'll be looking at and all code requirements and the HVAC system, which really needs to be worked on, the lighting and sound in the auditorium, as well as the facility layout, repurposing some um, of the rooms. And we talked about future renovation possibilities um, at that time. And we're talking future in the future stages on down the line. Our next meeting will be this Friday here in the boardroom, uh, Friday the 6th at 1 o'clock here in the boardroom. Thank you. Report of Media and Communications Committee, Director Milliman. We met uh, June 18th uh, here in the boardroom. And the usual reports were given. Uh, Mr. Holland reported on the, uh, again, that we have only 35 analog channels right now, which are offered. And by the end of this year, they will be gone. And residents are being informed about the conversion schedule so that they're not taken by surprise. Remember, if you still have an analog TV, that you can rent a set top, which will compensate for what's happening or you can buy a new uh, flat screen. And if you want to get rid of your older TV, as Siobhan mentioned, call resident services. They can help you. There's been a steady rise uh, in uh, subscriber counts. Um, and the ad insertions are also up. Internet rentals and uh, also help to counteract for the costs of running the station itself. Uh, Ms. Paulin introduced uh, Trello software, which is a software that provides the committee with types of projects and the departments which Marcom, that's Marketing Communications, has assisted. Because we are making uh, sure that all communications that go from the village are uh, properly branded so that we look uniform. And, uh, the next, the next meeting will be uh, July 16th at 1.30 here in the, in the boardroom, and we'll discuss um, adding marketing to the title, since we have a new section that's very important. We'll be discussing the, the new scoop page, which is uh, answers that the villagers wish when rumors are out there, where do you go to find what's really happening? 
and we hope to make it an interactive page. Um, we'll mention uh, what's happening with Thrive and the Breeze and the E-Blast. And that's for our next meeting, July 16th, again, here in the boardroom at 1.30. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Report of Mobility and Vehicles Committee, Director Troutman. Uh, good morning and happy Independence. The m and Committee met on June 6th and was presented with a petition requesting that the seven-day fixed route be returned. There were 260 signatures on the petition, 178 from United, 81 from Third, and two signatures from the Towers. Since there was a fair amount of data attached to the petition, staff requested time to review it and return it with their analysis at the August 1st m and meeting. After months of deliberation and exploring options to service the Tower residents in a more effective and efficient way, while not reducing service levels to the rest of the community at the same time, Staff reported that their findings, uh, quote, uh, tower residents make an average of 124 trips a day, Monday through Friday. For the towers to be supported solely by a planner ride, three additional vehicles would be needed to accommodate the average 12 trips per hour. And then fixed route buses, if we use that scenario, would no longer service the towers. It would also require the purchase of six additional buses at the cost of $650,000. Due to the high number of buses and drivers required to implement this concept, staff has determined that it was not feasible at this time to give the towers their own buses. At that meeting, I informed both staff and the committee that I would bring this request to the budget meeting on July 9th for consideration of more buses to meet the Raise, rising demand of the planner ride system that we forced upon the residents and now has proved to be a success. However, even Brad has implied that the planner ride is so successful, uh, we both have concerns that we'll have trouble meeting the demand. So since I have that same concern, I'm pleading with the GIF board to consider adding $650,000 to the transportation budget that staff says we need to better accommodate the planner ride for the entire community. After all, $650,000 is only 1 20th or one half of a percent of the 12.8 million we were ready to spend on the PAC building. So it is estimated that over 2,500 residents are now using the buses for the plan ride and that the number is rising every day. The buses are an amenity for health, wellness, and economical need for our residents, just as much as the PAC is, if not more so. And just think it only would cost one half of a percent more. The next meeting is August 1st, right here in the boardroom. Um, every month we put out a flyer and you can find them either on the bus, in the clubhouses, and what's another place? Uh, down here at the, sometimes they have them here at the information desk. Uh, today, today they went to Laguna Beach, July 10th. They're going to the Aliso Viejo Town Center, July 17th. Orange Tree Square Shopping Center, July 24th. They're going to the Spectrum. That's always a uh, crowded trip. July 31st, they're going to the Marketplace at Laguna Niguel. And August 7th, they're going to the Mission Viejo Mall. Also on this um, newsletter, they have a picture of the cart that I showed earlier uh, requesting that you use a 15 inch wide basket because when they, with the older buses were a lot bigger and there was room to tie those baskets down, but our new buses uh, are like three feet shorter and there isn't enough room. If you get two or three baskets, you could, we could do it, but you won't be able to accommodate it if everybody on a busy bus, if everybody had a cart. Uh, last week, one lady, at Stater Brothers was trying to push the sh uh, store shopping cart onto the bus ramp. <laughs> and that didn't go over a little bit. <laughs> uh, something else we're doing, um, no one's mentioned the July 4th picnic. We are doing a shuttle against it uh, this year. They don't have the details yet as of last night. If you want to take the shuttle, they'll be leaving from either Clubhouse 5, uh, 7, sorry, or the employee's um, parking lot, which is across on Via del Campo, across from Garden Center 2. You can drive over there, leave your car, and get on the bus. 
as of last night, they were just still taking names for the list. They didn't have the details yet of what times those uh, buses were going to be picking up at those locations. But uh, call if you want to use the shuttle because you have to put your name on a list and they will call you back with the details when they figured out how they're gonna do it. And um, I'm on the list, so I'm waiting for that call. I was hoping to get it by now so I can share that information with you. Try calling the transportation office Again, at, um, let's see, 597-2590 four, four, and get your name put on that list so we can get the details. I'm not sure how the guest, if you're bringing a guest on the shuttle, how that's going to work. Um, I'm sure we're going to allow one guest per carded member. And uh, let's see, that's all I have for the next meeting. Like I said, is at 1.30, August 1st, here in the boardroom where staff will give us their response to the petition we were presented with. We'll have a film demonstration of the planner ride scheduling stiff, uh, system staff wants to put in place. This is gonna be another change. So if you want to know ahead of time what changes we're gonna make, you really need to come to the meeting. We're gonna call it, we're hoping to call it Ride Now instead of planner ride. To get more details, please come to the meeting August 1st that's a Wednesday at 1.30 in this room. Thank you. Yeah, I believe Shulman already talked about the, the event with your opening comments. Okay, thank you. All right, item F, Report of Security and Community Access Committee, Director Soule. Hi, happy Independence Day, everyone, uh, starting tomorrow. Basically, I wanna talk about the fact that we, the Security and Community Access Committee meeting was held on Thursday, June the 28th at 1.30 here in the boardroom. And due to a conflict in the schedule, the Security and Community Access Committee meetings uh, has been, the date has been changed. It will now occur on the fourth Monday of each even month at 1.30 here in the boardroom. The next meeting will be August 27th at 2018. I've been meeting monthly with uh, Chief Moy regarding uh, events in the community and right now, we want to encourage residents to register their guests using Dwelling Live application or the web-based version found on the Laguna Woods Village website. Please make sure that your guests know the manner and the specific unit number along with the name, along with your name, when they arrive at the gatehouse. And there again, if you're not familiar with how to use Dwelling Live, you can uh, go to Laguna Woods Village YouTube channel to view the Dwelling Live demonstration or video, training video. And again, there is one on the uh, Laguna Woods website. I basically want to say that residents are strongly encouraged to download the Dwelling Live application to input their own guests. As far as the uh, disaster preparedness, uh, there have been two fires in the last two weeks here in the village. One occurred in a kitchen and the other in a living room, and that was caused by an electrical line that was, a, that was duct taped. So Chief Moy will be working with the marketing manager, mm -hmm. Eileen Pellin, to educate the community on fire prevention tips. And uh, he basically will be, he's creating a staff report and he, and he plans to present and bring a device called Fire Avert, which turns off the gas if a fire is detected automatically. So he'll bring that at our August meeting. Um, basically, the, uh, the next thing was <clears throat> Chief Moy informed the committee that the RV Lot A is going to be under construction beginning September 9th of 2018 through October. The project will include replacing the concrete drainage swale down the center of the lot, replacing the con concrete draining swale on the west side of the lot, replacing asphalt curb on the upper area of the lot, and new pavement and new striping. So uh, they're gonna try to fit in many RVs as possible and they can into the RV lot B. However, you will notice in United and Third, parking of RVs on the larger streets during that time. And everyone will receive a letter ahead of time to say that that's going on. The other thing we, comp we uh, Chief Moy advised during the security and community access meeting was he, com he commented on the compliance cases and another compliance coordinator is going to be hired to help with the caseload 
as the number of compliance cases are increasing due to a greater awareness of the rules and enforcement on specific violations, such as illegal occupancy, caregiver policy, and illegal alterations. Um, also, we talked about the gate access update. Um, this is to inform the village that basically the gate project to install new gate arms will begin in around August or September, should be finished by the end of the year. And then basically, uh, he, the chief commented at our meeting why certain protocols are basically followed, and the protocol being that for the gate access, um, you need to have your manor number and your unit number because there are many people with the same last name in the village because some residents felt that only they should be able to give their their guests should be able to just give their name and it doesn't work like that due to so many last names being the same. We can't do that. Concerning the golf cart safety policy, this was a reminder that all golf carts need to have their new golf cart decals by July 1st, 2018. So that's already passed. So non-resident owners need to advise their renters about the rules and regulations. This will be um, the chief and Ray Gross are going to be working on a golf cart safety video. And uh, the chief said that uh, he's being very nice about this. He's going to give a warning for those golf carts. They've targeted about 500, I think, in the village that haven't had this done yet. Um, a vial basically to give them a warning and then at some point you're going to cross the line you're just going to start getting a ticket okay the uh, again I want to highlight the concept of see something say something and residents can take action by making a phone call to security um, also Laguna Woods Village is one of the safest communities in Orange County all right thank you Oh, I apologize. Our next meeting will be scheduled for Monday, August 27th at 1.30 p.m. here in the Laguna Woods Village Community Center boardroom. Thank you. Thank you. The 23rd. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I came out of gate 7 the other day in my car. I looked at the signal, and there's a cart in front of me sitting at the signal, getting ready to turn left on to El Toro, yeah, they do that. right? <clears throat> the uh, two residents in it. He turns, the signal turns, he turns left right onto the, just like a car, you know, right? I'm going, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Cars are whizzing by, uh -huh. I tell you. So uh, we need that video and we need people to drive safely and not on the street. Okay, uh, report of traffic hearings, Director Gross. Okay, I'll just add to what uh, you just said. Uh, the, the meeting is going to be held on the 12th that we're going to be doing the video. And as you were saying, <clears throat> people don't realize it, but the other day I was on Bolton and there was a, a cart, golf cart in the number one lane. That's 45 miles an hour. There just about was two accidents there. Uh, I went behind the guy flashing my lights to get him out of the way and tell him you're not supposed to do that. Of course, he didn't have nice things to say to me, but that's the way it is. But this is what we're going to be doing about on this, this new video so people understand the safety factors here to involve. Uh, as of the traffic hearing, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, 28 people there. And the greatest amount of people was because of this new situation on the contractors and subcontractors parking their vehicles in the wrong locations. Uh, I'll explain real fast about that, and this is important. This thing was revived on 6.30 on 17. Contractors are given this information, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of our renters and leasing people are not getting this information, so they hire contractors uh, to do the work and so forth, and then all of a sudden, they're getting notice of violation, not the contractor they got before us. So here's, here's what it physically says. Parking is only allowed on named streets. You are not allowed to park within numbered cul-de-sacs and manor parking lots. This includes service and personal vehicles all driven by workers. Vehicles may be parked in their sponsoring residence driveway when the resident permission is, is given. May not uh, uh, obstruct the sidewalk. Uh, the ex exceptions of vehicles, equipment, and materials immediately and directly required for performance of work for loading and unloading. 
We give them a half hour to unload their vehicle. If it's in the residence here, then they're supposed to go around and park on the street. And, and this is not being, so this information is going to be given to the people here, hopefully with what I said earlier. In, in addition, it says, and, and you have to understand, we have people who physically live here that are driving pickup trucks, that are doing construction work, and say, oh, it's my personal vehicle. That's not the way it is. Contractors may park their sponsoring residence driveway and residence permission, but may not obstruct it. Vehicles equipped in materials immediately and directly required for the performance of work, vehicles immediately loading or unloading, and GRF owned vehicles and equipment. What we tell these folks is that this gives the impression of you being a contractor, whether you will live here or not. So we have rules and regulations, and we're trying to get that straightened out. And the chief is really going to be working on this, this situation with the contractors, and we're trying to get the word out uh, to the folks. So uh, also, we have a situation where under the traffic committee, for instance, the citations issued so far were 2,880 uh, notices of violation. There were 226 of these that were voided, just gotten rid of completely. 35 people uh, attended traffic school, and there were 694 closed sessions. What, excuse me, what we try to do is explain these things to people. The other greatest amount of, of, of notices of violation are for speeding and for stop signs. It's absolutely amazing. People are going through stop signs 10, 15, 20 miles an hour. And we explain to them, and they say, oh, I stopped. When you show them the video, oh my gosh. And we try to explain this for the safety of the community here. You may have something else on your mind. If you have a challenge along that line, park your vehicle on the side of the road until you're all straightened out. So these are the things we try to do. And believe it or not, people are thanking us because they are not aware of what is really going on. Anyway, uh, and we, believe it or not, we also have a lot of people who live in here who do not renew their driver's license. That's really bad because it, just because you live here in a, in a community like this, you say, oh, I'm, I'm 85 years old. I don't need it. You do. They also don't register their vehicles. That's a safety issue, and it's an insurance issue. That means if you get hit, they don't have insurance, look out. So we try to put that information out. And Chief Moy is doing a phenomenal job on this, and, and so is staff. So bear with us. We'll try to do things the right way. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Report Disaster Preparedness Task Force Director Troutman. Since the task force um, meetings have moved to the last Tuesday of odd, odd months, there was no meeting in June, which is an even month. If you are a care and reception center coordinator, you'll still have to um, use your radio drill every month. The last Tuesday of every month at 8.30, we have a radio drill in the morning to test our radios. And there was a sad response this last Tuesday because the members knew the meetings moved to odd months, and they thought we were only going to do the radio drills in odd months. And they didn't realize. Um, so the radios weren't on and they didn't get tested. So for all those that are clubhouse coordinators, uh, try to remember that. Um, after all, a disaster isn't going to wait to determine if it's an odd or even month So before it hits. So all our radios need to be functional 24 hours a day and be tested monthly. Uh, today in the closed agenda, this board will review and hopefully finalize the disaster preparedness charter resolution. If it passes the litmus test, it'll be brought to the open meeting in August. And if approved there, the task force will become um, an official uh, entity of the GRF Security Division. Again, this meeting is on Tuesday, July 31st, 9.30 in the Cypress Room. And if you go to the website, there's all kinds of information. Uh, this is the first page that will come up. And uh, it says briefly, Disaster Task Force Committee was organized by Laguna Woods Village residents in 1989 and consists of volunteers who function under the GRF Foundation and in cooperation with the Security Department. And the purpose is to keep residents aware, informed, and prepared for major disasters. So I can't find all the names that went back to 1989, but I know among um, Four of them, uh, there was a Joanne Foster and Tris Cassidy, and today we still have Kathleen Matthews and Tom Soule that spend many, many hours in that room down here on the first floor, 
and um, they deserve a great applaud because they put a lot of their uh, time and hours in there. It's open. Okay, that's for you guys. And um, so now we've got this fantastic uh, book, Emergency Operating Centers. It's, it's not on the website yet. So we're working on doing that. If you really want a copy to find out what's in our disaster plan, you can contact me, and if you're willing to pay the three cents a copy, I can have it copied at the printers. But you'd have to pay for the printing. So anyway, that concludes my visit. Again, the meeting is Tuesday, July 31st, 9.30 in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, future agenda items. We've already, uh, we're working on approving a design for, the, for a decorative wall in Clubhouse 4. We've already talked about, uh, we are, we're not gonna consider, we are doing a cart safety training. Uh, Director Gross and Chief Moyer are working on that. So we'll go straight down to item 16, director comments. Mr. Matson. Good meeting. Thank you. Mr. Juhan. Ditto. Judith Troutman. Yes, again, happy 4th of July and play safe. Nothing, Diana. Uh, Ray. Yeah, on uh, Laguna Canyon Foundation, Unfortunately, the paperwork has not been received yet. They're a couple of days behind. Uh, I spoke to the representative yesterday, and they will be uh, sent to us within the next day or so. They'll be at the front lobby. Uh, and if you need to get a hold of them, the phone number to call is 949-497-8324. That's 949-497-8324. This is a great organization. There's a lot of things that goes on with this a group, and, and uh, you'll learn a lot from them. Thank you. Director Parrott. Happy Independence Day, and I want to remind you to take advantage of the wonderful opportunity. Clubhouse 2 celebration tomorrow. Fireworks at 845. Thank you. Mr. Palmer. Uh, nothing except to have a happy holiday tomorrow. Director Sewell. Good meeting, and happy 4th, everyone. Bert? Everybody stay well. Joan? And have fun. Happy holiday tomorrow. All I have is, again, thank you all the board members, staff, and residents for a good day. Keep up the good work, and this meeting is recessed.